After overcoming a 24-point deficit in the second half against the Nuggets but falling short, in a half where they posted a ridiculous 61.7 defensive rating without Draymond Green, and before that, taking down the stacked second-seeded Phoenix Suns completely short-handed, here's what they won't tell you about the Golden State Warriors. As Steph continues to draw every double team known to man, the floor completely opens up for the supporting cast to go off. While Steph's not quite been at his MVP level from 2021, conversely, this season, the man's nicely letting his well-suited supporting cast pick up the slack during the first few quarters, and taking over when he needs to in the fourth. Let's look at the silver linings in the Dove's recent tough L to Denver minus the former DPOI, and stay tuned to see the most underrated yet lethal threat to the Warriors' beastly system. Before continuing, only 11.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Despite the Dubs and Nuggets Thursday night rematch being postponed, there's a couple truths that can be derived from the Warriors' 89-86 loss to Denver two nights earlier. To get the obvious out of the way, a loss is a loss regardless of how wide the margin of defeat is, and it's an L that Golden State probably shouldn't have taken given Denver, even with the reigning MVP and current MVP candidate Nikola Jokic playing, were severely depleted overall. Golden State has a much deeper team than Denver right now, Therefore, the game was a missed opportunity for the Dubs to extend their Western Conference lead that's currently at half a game over the Suns after Phoenix took an L in Beantown today. We'll get to the glaring positives, but the first half versus Denver was extremely tumultuous and a nightmare for Dubs fans as Golden State turned the ball over nine times, uncharacteristically scoring just 36 points with a seemingly discombobulated offense without Draymond Green's direction and playmaking chops. The Warriors' defense was also extremely lackluster as the team looked complacent, struggling to find answers against the Joker in the low post. Joker also had shockingly adequate contributions from his skeleton crew supporting cast. Will Barton had 17 points in the first half, while the Nuggets' bench outscored the Warriors' bench 17-8. Denver utterly owned the paint, scoring 28 points inside. To their credit, Golden State did unleash every type of defensive game plan against Denver from man coverage to switching on screens and a 1-2-2 zone defense. Even the increasingly popular box and one was utilized against Jokic, but to no avail. The Serbian phenom for the Mile High City either busted through high-low passes or through perimeter shot making by the rest of his teammates, who shot 7 of 15 on threes during the first half. As I said, not only did Golden State's lack of offensive execution and flow play a part in their lethargic first half play, but it was their lack of defensive tenacity which allowed the Nuggets to build up a seemingly insurmountable 24-point lead at the half, which carried over into the third. As quarter number three got its legs under it, what became clear was that Golden State had made a couple adjustments, not merely from a strategic standpoint from Coach Kerr, but also from an execution and effort standpoint in terms of the confidence and hustle of their top players. The man who owned half number one, Nikola Jokic, immediately found it more difficult to maneuver down low in the post, as multiple blue shirts hounded the All-NBA center with well-executed double teams. Additionally, the communication as well as their fluid rotations were significantly crisper in the third quarter, as the Dubs magnificently defended on a string. Defensive stops and turnovers were turned into transition points or semi-transition points, which is the most effective form of offense there is. In the Warriors' first game without Draymond, compared to the opening half, the contrast was most noticeable in terms of the team's defensive efficiency massively differing after the start of the second half. Their leaky defense and terrible energy during the first resulted in the Nuggets scoring 130.4 points per 100 possessions, but the Warriors plugged the holes and stopped the leakage altogether in the second half, allowing an extremely stingy 61.7 points per 100 possessions. Along with trying to force the ball out of Jokic's hands as much as possible, quite simply the Warriors were able to return to their best defensive trait, defending on a string, elite chemistry, complete connectedness, and a culture of holding each other accountable are the fundamental keys which allow the Dubs to make near flawless rotations. Weaker teams are easily vulnerable on the perimeter and seams open up merely after a couple swing-swing passes. Conversely, at their best, the Warriors show utter tenaciousness from the very start to the end of possessions in their pursuit of stops. 
helping the helper is an absolutely massive factor in their ability to be crisp and confident with their rotations. Weak side zoning, under control yet combative closeouts to force tough shots or chase snipers off the three point line, low man help back to side rotations, relieving teammates who've just been beat on back cuts. These are all team defense principles the Warriors have nearly perfected whenever they show off laser sharp focus. Golden State's league best 101.6 defensive rating, which is tops in the NBA over the Cavaliers by 2.1 points, is a product of multiple factors, forcing tough shots, preventing shots from being taken in the first place, forcing turnovers, and turning half-court possessions into stagnant and inefficient ones. In contrast to the first half, the Warriors were able to accomplish all of the above against the Nuggets. A game before that, headlining the NBA's most anticipated outing on Christmas Day, the Golden State Warriors and Phoenix Suns squared off at the Footprint Center in Phoenix. After splitting their first two games of the season series, the Warriors won 116-107 in the third matchup between the squads with the two best records in basketball. Gracing the lineup for the Bay, were both two-way players mixing up their time between the G League and the pros in Chris Chioza and Jeff Doughton. They also had their recent hardship signing Quindary Weatherspoon active, and they only had 11 available players on Saturday. Without almost their entire wing depth chart, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Andre Gudala, Damian Lee, and of course Klay Thompson, the Warriors were up against trying to slow down the Suns' high-powered offense. Golden State got off to a hot start though, led by the two-time MVP Stephen Curry. Entering that game, Curry had never scored 20 points on a Christmas Day outing. However, an early May 3 sparked an 11-point first quarter that led the Dubs to a 33-27 lead at the end of the first quarter. Draymond Green was at his best early, threading the needle on several early assists and setting the tone defensively. Green matched up against Suns point guard Chris Paul and was flying all over the place all game long. His passing got a bit more erratic as the game went on, but Green stepped up to ensure Golden State could keep the game close despite missing key defenders like Wiggins and Iguodala. He finished the game with 8 points, 7 rebounds, 10 dimes, 3 steals, and 3 blocks. The Suns doubled Steph sporadically throughout the rest of the game, and while he consistently found his way to the free throw line, Phoenix kept him contained from the field. Without a strong second quarter and minimal offensive contributions from anyone else besides Gary Payton II, the Dubs went into the half trailing 62-58. The Warriors rebuilt a lead in the first half of the third quarter, but Phoenix bounced back as soon as Curry went to the bench. With the game tied at 84 entering the fourth quarter, Golden State's limited depth would be tested. Curry reignited at the start of the fourth and stretched the Warriors' lead to seven. Rookie Jonathan Kuminga gave the dub some huge minutes off the bench, playing great defense on Paul and scoring some much-needed points. Jonathan finished with 12 points on 3-for-4 shooting from the field, including a highlight reel reverse layup in the fourth. However, Curry went to the bench with five minutes left, and the dubs went minus three while he sat. Steph returned to the game with 247 left in regulation, hoping to finish off Phoenix, Instead of Curry, though, it was Otto Porter Jr. who stepped up to nail a huge three-pointer that extended the Warriors' lead to 116-107. Starting in place of Wiggins, Porter recorded a huge 19 points alongside six rebounds and three dimes. Still, Curry finally broke 20 points on Christmas Day, finishing with 33-3-6, along with three steals. Unsurprisingly, he was also a game-high plus 24. The greatest shooter of all time, Steph, has moved down to number three on Kia's MVP ladder behind Durant and Giannis. Steph's gone through a bit of a rough stretch since starting the season on fire, but even when he's having an off night, he's still making hustle plays and at the very least drawing defensive attention away from his teammates. Along with Curry, Draymond Green, who's the team's best screen setter, passer, and defender, deserve their flowers. But the show doesn't become nearly as fun to watch and the Warriors aren't nearly as dominant without well-rounded glue guys like Gary Payton II. The son of the greatest guard defender in NBA history, GP2 has some elite clamps himself. In only 16 minutes per game, he's racking up 1.2 steals and per 36 minutes, that chalks up to a total of 2.7, which would lead Toronto's Gary Trent Jr. by 0.5. The four-year product of Salt Lake CC in Oregon State has had a storybook journey to the pros after going undrafted in 2016. Since that year, Peyton II has spent time on five different G League teams and barely fought his way onto the Warriors roster this year, beating out veteran Avery Bradley for the final roster spot. 
Gary fits into the dub system perfectly because he's an excellent off-ball cutter, he can fake cuts with the threat of his athleticism, and seamlessly pop out and knock down shots from beyond the arc. We've looked at Air Canada Andrew Wiggins in previous videos, but what remains overlooked about this man is his lengthy perimeter defense. Wiggins can adequately contest shooters that he's a few feet away from due to his elite reach, the former number one overall picks, seven foot wingspan, and seemingly improved defensive instincts under the mentorship of Draymond Green has made the Dubs a significantly tougher team to get buckets on. We can't gloss over OPJ Otto Porter Jr., the man who closed out the Suns in dramatic fashion. The former Washington Wizard has revitalized his prime self from the nation's capital, and on both ends of the floor, whether he's making seemingly impossible chase down blocks and trash talking his matchup, or hitting timely daggers from distance when Dubs fans need them most, what a damn solid and underrated offseason signing that Automatic ended up being. A very close second behind Draymond in terms of screen setting, we can't forget about the man with 99 hands up front in Kevon Looney, who continues to be a crucial piece, locking up the most talented centers in the game. Small ball lineups hold Kevon to 19.2 minutes per game, so he doesn't qualify, but if he did, his 100.8 defensive rating would rank him second among all centers behind the three-time DPOY Rudy Gobert. We also can't forget about the 19-year-old number seven pick from this year's draft, Jonathan Kuminga. The Rook must improve at the free throw line, but is nonetheless an exceptional, potentially generational talent if developed properly. In the game against my Raptors, where the Warriors were completely shorthanded, I was really impressed with Kuminga's timely shots and blistering first step. JK finished with 26 points on 9 for 15 from the field and 4 for 6 from deep to go along with two steals north of the border. In conclusion, what they won't tell you about the Warriors is that Steph is going to heat up when he needs to, but he may struggle at times throughout the entirety of the game, and it's in those moments where the Dubs role players come to life and step up for him. But I want to know your take. What's something most people don't mention about the Warriors? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. The top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. Today's Speaks winner is Soma, who says the Bulls have built such an identity because the GM assembled a bunch of players who work hard, bring energy, and do whatever it takes to win. Thanks for every amazing answer. Hope you all have a great one. DFlow signing off.